The Great Lakes are definitely not famous for surfing. I learned how to surf in the ocean. I moved up here from North Carolina and moving up here, it was like, I was worried that I wasn't gonna be able to surf, uh, but I found out that tons of people actually do surf the Great Lakes. And it's, it's kind of a lesser known fact, I guess. Like even people that you talk to, um, when I hit up drive throughs after I surf and they see the surfboard in the car, people are like, where are you surfing at? Like even in Michigan, people have no idea. Um, but yeah, it's uh, definitely not famous for surfing on the Great Lakes, but there's a huge community and I would say a growing community of people that do it. My name is Matt Wagner. Um, I'm a videographer, filmmaker. Right now, I'm apart from client work, I'm working on three big documentaries all involving different athletes on the Great Lakes. Um, one of them is kind of a passion project that I'm doing about Great Lakes surfing. So I'm interviewing a lot of Great Lakes surfers um, hopefully at least one or two from each Great Lake. One of the things that's really cool about it is there's not a lot of people that do it. And so there's a sense of, I don't know, a, a sense of like, we're the only ones that are doing it. Like we, we kind of feel like we're on the forefront of something. So the camera equipment I'm using right now Primarily for my documentaries is the Fujifilm X-T4 and X-T3. Those are my A and B cams. Um, and I had those set up, one with just like a 24 to 70 equivalent. Just, I think that's the perfect focal range for documentary. It gives you everything you need, basically. And then the other one I have a, a telephoto lens on. So especially for like this paddleboarding documentary, sometimes I need that long shot if we're in a boat and I have to shoot all the way to the beach of a, a launch from the shore. I love Fujifilm. I got in Fujifilm a few years ago. I love the color science. Um, I love their Eterna profile. I love the, the dynamic range that you get out of their log. So I used to use GoPros a lot for all my water sport stuff, even just like filming myself and strapping it onto my surfboard. Um, what I found when I moved up to Michigan is that the GoPros just haven't been able to handle the cold elements as well. Um, I would go out, especially in like December, January, surfing in those winter months, they would just lock up on me all the time. I would start recording and they would just freeze and, and stop the recording. Or sometimes it would just stop and I didn't know it and it would record like maybe three minutes, four minutes, and that would be it. Some of the underwater shots that I've been getting for this paddleboarding documentary, I've been doing that with the Insta360 and uh, it's the Insta360 1R and I have the Leica one inch lens mod on it. Matching the footage from the Fujifilm X-T4 and the Insta360 1R is a little bit of a challenge. My Fujifilm is set up to where it's pretty low contrast. Even when I'm not shooting in log, it's pretty low contrast. It has a really good dynamic range. And the Insta360, they like to add their contrast in, so, <laughs> um, and saturation. So. Uh, it's a definitely definitely harder when you're working between like a camera that's actually meant to be shooting for color grading and a camera that's meant to be an action camera that you just kind of grab the footage and go with it. The Insta360 footage is not a primary footage at all, right? Like it'll be an instant here or an instant there, like you'll just catch glimpses of it. But overall, it's not like driving the look of a project. and so. I'm okay with like a shot not being perfectly color matched. If you just see it for a second and it's cool and you see that something's underwater and you're like, whoa, okay, wow, that was crazy. Um, your brain doesn't have time to process like, oh, the color was off on that. <laughs> so I try, I try as best I can, but it's definitely a challenge. I feel like the Insta360 limits me in terms of the amount that I can use that footage. So obviously I'm not gonna film an entire documentary on that camera um, and it's great for reels or vlogs or whatever and that's fine but for the actual documentary work i'm doing um i'm very cautious with when i want to put it in the documentary just because you know it doesn't look as good it's harder to grade it can get grainy pretty quickly if it's if it's lower light and so yeah i think uh it, you know it's not a cinema camera and it's it's not going to look as good naturally i'm not afraid to use it but uh it's definitely very limiting in terms of how you can use it and when you want to put those shots in. 
So today was the first time I've ever used an underwater housing. Uh, I just got out there and kind of didn't go deep or diving or anything with it, but just messed around in the waves and kind of got some shots of the sun and the lighthouse looking back through the water. And um, it was a new experience for me. I really enjoyed it. I also didn't realize that like you could actually control every single element of your camera from it. Um, I kind of thought most of these would be like a, you know, set it and forget it kind of thing. And there would be like a shutter and like maybe a exposure dial. Um, but it's, it's wildly intricate how like all the buttons are, are planned and like how they get these knobs to, to work everything. It's really cool. The, the whole idea of like having this interchangeable dome so you can have different sizes is really cool. I had always wondered like, you know, how you get different lens lengths and stuff in there. Um, and it makes sense that the dome comes in and out. When I first picked this thing up, I never realized how heavy these were. <laughs> um, I think like I had this image in my mind of like, oh yeah, people hold them and they're under the water and they're just like going everywhere with them and it's super awesome. But this is heavy, like it's no joke. I didn't know that they float. <laughs> so that's really cool. Uh, that's definitely a plus. I mean, it makes sense that they would, right? But it's just something you, you don't think about. Using it in the water was, was interesting. Yeah, it was just a new feeling for me. This is like a lot more uh, involved. So it was a lot more work. Once I kind of got into a groove of it, I feel like you kind of just let the water do more of the work <laughs> than trying to like force this because the water is just kind of taking you everywhere. I, th I feel like once I leaned back, I was just kind of sitting back in my wetsuit um, and kind of floating on my back a little bit. It became a lot more comfortable, kind of like using this air bubble as, you know, helping me carry a lot of the weight. Help a ton. The build quality is insane. Man. Like, I don't even know what this is made of, but you can tell it's like, you could probably throw this off a building and it'd be fine. <laughs>